Cancel canceling. Calm down and verbalize articulated points to open dialogue with contextual interpretation interpretations. Theory and practice are very different. Stop dumbing down media for fear of offense of others. Truth trumps emotions. Political correctness is absurd in practice. Parables are tools to teach hard to swallow facts. Non-concrete thought. Don't be a pussy. Truth exists and science is a process we use to seek truth. White men are not the devil. Mankind itself is. Or rather, the ego. Fight language control. When suggested to avoid using words, use them more. Be sensitive, but no language police. Assimilate the opposing elements. We are on a mission to synthesize the extreme polarities into a single whole. When people connect to the collective, most feel love as the one overwhelming feeling in the experience. Love from everywhere and everyone. But this is more than likely due to the fact that love is the majority in the collective. One can also experience all the pain and loss, the living collective care. Animals who are not filled with your awareness suddenly well it can be overwhelming think of story of the story the ape who was made too smart oh think of the story where the ape was made too smart his body could not support his mind and so he grew depressed until he lost his newfound intelligence in an accident and was free to be happy again since all life is awareness Suffering seems to be order and disorder creating dissonance, which is endured and experienced as pain and suffering. But, as a, but it is awareness becoming aware of discomfort. The Planck scale is the LEDs of the universe, mathematically small beyond reason, yet responsible for all order found in space. I shall endure unto the end of that which has no end, for naught has no end to endure. I see you, see me, see you. The analogy of the world is play, stage play, Twin Peaks, funny or offensive, why not both? We are bound by paradox. Shit. Trans music has always been a conjunction of numbers and emotions. Math and feelings. Fear inoculum took this to its highest expression. 
The fundamental basis of fear inoculum is duality and the alchemical union of opposites, and this is expressed in the music, art, lyrics, and themes. Though there are True. True. Oh shit, okay. So he he started the whole soul thing. Okay. Well I mean he didn't start but he started talking. Well, my friends and I. This was a book I started a few years ago. I just found it. It's one of the ones I want to start to put to... I need, I need to... I need to get... I need to... <laughs> I need to edit it. I haven't read it. So, uh... <clears throat> I can remember the first time I ever saw a Toll video. I may have heard their music and didn't know... I was in fact only 12 or 13 at the time, and was never introduced to Toll by those I took advice, or rather the tapes and CDs eventually they gave me. MTV at the time did in fact still play music, but it was of course subpar pop crap, but occasionally they had metal hour of some kind where I'd get to hear the testosterone-driven angst music that fueled so many of my older peers. At the time, I remember now, I was visiting my sister in Rhode Island. She left our semi-primitive Mifflin County in central PA, horse and buggies and all, to go to the Navy, an idea which was passed to her from our father, who also suggested time and time again I joined the military. Uh, she lived with a man she married and a 14 or 16 year old daughter of his. Now for some reason I was alone watching a music channel they had. Maybe make, maybe MTV, maybe not. But I see and hear the strangest thing. I watch with amazement and horror. Oh, I remember. I remember. Might as well play the play what I'm talking about. Okay. Who's hot lemonade seltzer is this? Looks so crazy. Piece of shit. The best. Dude, don't all forget, product A is superior to product B. Fucking A. Okay. I was alone watching a music channel, maybe MTV, maybe not, but I see and hear the strangest thing. I watch, and with amazement and horror, and when someone came back to the room I was in, I changed the channel quickly, and with a hot shame on my face. I didn't understand why I felt like that. It was as if they'd caught me watching a porno. But just as if it was a porno. Just as if it was a porno. As soon as they left, I changed it back. <laughs> now at the time, you have to understand, I had no idea what the hell, what I had just encountered. But part of me did. <clears throat> it was so strange a thing, I felt. Like I had to protect something so they couldn't all see. Now the song I saw, it's, it's still hard to recall. It's prison sex. Right here I'm set, questioning whether it's animal or prison sex. Need to find out what year I was up at Jens. It was definitely prison sex. It was the video of prison sex. What is it that makes a Tool fan? Some may quickly answer this question with a witty charm claiming Tool fans are fanatic, drug-crazed, Bill Hicks, Aleister Crawley worshipping, intellectual, intellectual, intellectual posers, all claiming to hold some secret they could never explain, but say it's in the music, or some such nonsense. I would have to say, what makes a Tool fan is Tool, period. What I have learned most about Tool fans is that no two are alike, no matter how much they may look it. Now, I'm not saying the Tool crowd is free from clone posers, but then they especially are different from everyone else. 
Yet it is perhaps they who truly see a Tool concert with no expectations or attachment to any one song or album. Debatable. <laughs> I have seen more Tool fans made at concerts than I ever saw made by CD. I mean, people liked the CD, so they went to a show, and it was there they realized they loved Tool. Uh, but the true Tool fan becomes elusive, perhaps even hiding himself amongst the clone posers. How can one be sure if a wholly illuminated man of God or a vagrant possesses that body of the homeless Tool fan? So too, how could one tell a true fan over a false simply by the Tool shirt they wear? So Tool makes the fan. That is simple enough to understand. But then what is it that Tool makes? This goes back to how every Tool fan is a little different. Also, we should look at those things Tool uses to create with, since those are the things that will draw people's attention toward their work. Again, I shall repeat myself and say their live shows brought the OGTs together for the first time. Not an album, but I wasn't there. So let's look at the timeline and have a short discussion about the forces created, controlled, and aspired to in Tool's music. The basic, or most exposed aspects of Tool would have to be the members of the band itself and that which they cloak themselves with. We as audience get to know only those aspects of the group that we can gather from their songs, style, public interviews, and rumors. Those who rely on rumors often have a lot to talk about, but so very little to say. Though with the internet and all its resources, there are those who spend their days uncovering truth for those in the audience who seek it. But I digress. We seek the elements veiled by the artist, and yet by doing so, we get caught in a tangled web. For although we may like to separate the four members and their four instruments and label them each one of the four elements, it all ends up, it all ends in an unintelligible mess if we do so. For although Danny's deep drums that beckon one to think back to in inequity and remember those first men who killed their prey then created sacred drums out of their flesh to celebrate such kills and the like. Even though his gong is the very ideal progression of the coin, which is of course a symbol for Earth, we cannot limit him to that one element. It's absurd to not take into account his ability to swiftly, swiftly breeze in and out, carrying our attention when and where he pleases, or how he at times washes over us in a flood of emotion, both bursting with love and at times burning with red-hot hatred that sears all it touches. This, I think, is true for each bandmate until... They each can hold an elemental position if needed, but the general rule is they create a harmony by accepting change. They grow in and out of one another, and in so doing they are tinged with each other's creative style and background. Four allude to the fifth, which is spirit. Now it is clear each man has his has a job to do, and by rite of passage, it is evident that they have learned to do that job well, very well in fact. From the very conception of Tool, the people who saw them knew they were witnessing something amazing, and the edge of some new unknown human experience. The initial impression we, the audience, got was a tempest of frustrations willed into a backlash EP that set fire to anything that stood against it. Opiate was a deliberate fuck you to most of the people who heard it. 
It attacked and exposed many aspects of the human condition and revealed them to be both a disease and people's favorite poison. It's hard to accept those things we hate in others. It's even harder to realize those things we hate are very much a part of our own psyche. Confrontational lyrics, like in Cold and Ugly, reveal a deep-seated urge to own up to the very pale facade we try to shroud over, shroud our fear in, and by doing so, we the audience get a chance to do so as well. Though extremely heavy, the album is almost a remedy for the neurosis explored in each song, or it is at least the first exposure to a radiation designed to ultimately kill the cancer within us. So beware and beware, stranger all mysteries, especially mysteries revolving uh, revolving around Tool. In this vulgar era, many people have spoken ceaselessly about Tool's involvement and interest in those things labeled a cult. It is true enough to say many ideas Tool pushed forward were certainly hidden from the mainstream viewpoint, and without faces to adore, the audience for Tool had only scraps of artwork and allusions made lyrically in songs. The opiate for the masses was at one time revealed to be religion, and no doubt this single idea sprouted numerous others. When you try to tell someone they medicate themselves with ignorance, isn't that what religion should be about? They tend to get defensive rather than objective. They can't get their foot out of their mouths fast enough to be able to get their heads out of their ass. We all do it. Wait, scratch that, reverse it. We all do it. It's what the ego is best at, or at least it comes natural to it, to us. But sometimes to grow and change, we must do what isn't natural for us. You can't say you hate the way the world is and think you are living life the right way. We see only what we are hiding inside. In a lot of Tool songs, the lyrics take the position of a person who can't change or wants to change, and yet the lyrics don't always reflect the positive. Reflect the positive, aware person you'd expect to hear. Oftentimes, the lyric reflects instead the ignorant anthems of a person who doesn't have the courage or perhaps hasn't. doesn't have the courage or perhaps doesn't have the strength to follow through with growing out of destructive patterns in their life. This idea is most translatable in the song Vicarious. Vicariously I live while the whole world dies with a refrain much better you than I. Anyone who sings along with this song must at some point analyze what they're saying and either identify with them or separate themselves from them and begin to explore what type of person can live like that. It's interesting to go from identifying to observing the lyrics. It can happen in stages and I've observed not only in myself but also others in the audience a process that begins with the fan singing along. It then can become either the fan singing, identifying, and personifying the lyrics to themselves or at someone else, or the fan will hear the lyrics being sung at him from some place inside, which at times seems to be a great outside force. This can then be projected onto friends and family. It's Hooker with a Penis Psychology 101. The multidimensional aspects to Tool is what makes digging through their song so much of an experience. You aren't just learning lyrics to sing along with your friends. You're finding little breadcrumbs that lead you through a strange history that promises only a stranger future. From the moment... 
from the moment in that room in Rhode Island I first saw in her tool, I knew there was something big behind me, and I would only find it by moving ahead. What doesn't catch the sun by turning around and running west? You simply keep heading east, and you'll see your old friend come back around just beyond the horizon. It was probably a few years after that before Tool became a big part of my life. But the huge thing was out there, and I knew I'd be, and I kn knew it'd be coming up again sometime in the life I was, am traveling. But, and I didn't know it yet. I was about to chase the sun. Now it must have been 98 or so that I finally got the Anima album. It was the single most influential CD I ever had. Now I'm not sure when I got it. It truly should have been written down. So I actually may have had it in 96, but I don't remember it coming out. I remember being so in love with the cover art and yada yada yada, but I don't recall when. I do remember waiting for Salival and nearly dying before Lateralis came out. I remember so much at the beginning. For some reason, I'm drawing a blank on how and who brought me in. But that sparks in me the memories of an old friend, OGT, he'd say. And it is him Brandon Miller that I'll have to give credit to for bringing me into the audience and getting a chance to be a witness to the show. He always had the best stereos and all the new shit. Plus he lived walking distance from my house. We'd get stoned and listen to music for days at a time. And I cannot condone the use of drugs. drugs. I have in fact lost several close friends. My first lover and so many more when I didn't really know whom I didn't really know that were close to my other friends. But I won't say I wasn't in the middle I wasn't in the middle of enemy lines. We all made sure we were each on the bus lest we'd have to ride all alone. And you know Misery. She loves company. But we made the best of a bad situation. But let's face it. People, drugs have done good things for us, and anybody who says otherwise is a hypocrite. There is no way around it. We as human beings ingest substances that alter our moods and control our hunger while also giving energy. In America, the masses of conservative Tea Party sheep can, accept, can accept we as a nation decimating country after country, killing hundreds of thousands of innocent human beings, but they can't seem to wrap up their soulless meat bag heads around a group of people taking mind-altering substances in the privacy of their own homes. Tool has always held up the fuck you to closed mindedness and has even mapped out some pretty far out terrain which one inevitab inevitably finds as one delves deeper into their own expanding awareness. Though one shouldn't say a path is cleared. It's all up to the individual to clear their own path. But it's safe to say Tool supplies the, um, well, the tools needed to dig one through one's muddled mind. <sighs> Anyone who has taken drugs, specifically psychoactive substances, knows you never know what the trip is going to be like. But with a little experience, one soon finds it is possible to attempt to direct your mind towards certain experiences and avoid other, less pleasant ones. Setting is always key, as is the people you have around you. This place you create is and should be considered sacred. 
That's the whole point, whether one is aware of it or not. It's about healing. And more than that, it's learning to allow yourself to be healed. We have to really open up and forgive ourselves before any kind of transformation is possible. And this is where Tool come in. They create a space within their music that holds us, the audience, and it's nice and comfy and also powerful. But it gets taken into some deep, dark places at times. And the pressure can become so intense if they wonder the very carbon in our bodies doesn't metamorphose into diamond. In, out. In, out. We are pushed back and forth. We are hugged. And also we find ourselves pushing back or trying. Trying to hug. There's friction and dissonance inside us, and it somehow finds comfort in the tides that flow in the ocean that is a Tool album. So after a, after a while, some of us become aware that while on drugs, Tool become even more mysterious and powerful. I found an unca uncanny similarity between myself and Tool that excited and frighten me. While on acid, I think to myself, how can some band made of four individuals whom I've never met sing these songs about me? Oh, it must be God talking to me. It was very egotistical and vain for me to assume such things, but it was vi a very real experience for me. And well, and well, it still is. I'm not saying Tool writes songs for or about me. I'm really trying to put forward a much more far out idea than that. The simplest way to explain what I mean is to suggest a massive synchronicity going back to the farthest reaches of human history and stretches to our most distant future. Within all the chaos in life, beating on life, there has been a pattern hidden behind all the things that slowly emerges and unites outwardly with all that sprang from it. Toll, my friends, and I all share some strange connection that has driven us all to be who we are and do what we do. I write this now in the 12 months of the 11th year of the second millennia of this vulgar era. I am 27 and there is only two months until 28 years have passed me by. As much as I've seen and all the places I've gone, I've been have, wait, of all the places I've gone and been so amazing and terribly awesome. Wait, as much as I've seen and all the places I've gone and all the places I've gone have been so amazing and terribly awesome. Yet, I have so little to show from my experiences. Still, I am convinced I carry some treasure gained on those loftier places I've been to. So I write the tale not known by those too afraid to walk the path. So I'm 36 now. This was nine years ago. Or 37, I mean. <laughs> How old is it? This was nine years ago. Ten years ago, practically. I just turned 37. I was almost 28. So this was nine years ago. I am writing this as a kind of confession. I seek the ability to forgive myself so that I can begin to truly forgive all of you. You see, songs like Anima and generally... The whole Undertow album was an armor, an anthem for me and my friends. We treated each other... We treated each other's... Treat, treated each other worse than any one of us had... Would have treated his greatest enemy. The pure frustration of growing up being fed total bullshit, lies from every authority figure we'd encounter, planted seeds in us of rebellion. Annihilation. Now it may be true I was only born in 84, 
but I have not been blind to what type of control the system uses. And many of my friends and nearly all of my loved ones are plugged in, so to speak. The facade of the living room, kitchen, bedroom, den, these concepts built around us, separating us from the moving of the animals, plants, wind, waters, stars, in our boxes, we can do the various amusing activities, but in here is where we be who we think we are. What? Sorry. And inside the TV tells you who you are. It told our parents how to be parents and all they need to buy to do that. Parenting job. Good. <sighs> hey, hey, hey. Some say the end is near. I guess that's telling me what song to play. I don't know. Whatever, don't argue. Yeah, can see it says it's saying hey there. So after a while, my friends and I found comfort in the lyrics and energy we found in Toll's music. We really embraced it and found that although it was at times very hard to penetrate Tool, we also found that there did seem to be a way in. But as you entered, you simply found more and more. Now some may read that and think, oh God, the kid's going for stink fist jokes already. But honestly, what's inside, what's inside Tool isn't just some butthole. Or fat pussy. Okay, I felt like lovers hard at work. Okay, I felt like lovers hard at work. Sorry for that, by the way. Um, it seems Goat Boy took the pen and used it for a while. It's okay, though, since it perfectly illustrates my original point. When we first started digging into Anima to find answers, we immediately broke through some thick outer encrustation that gave way to a huge labyrinth of various references and allusions to different artists, writers, comedian Bill Hicks, and in general, a lot of idea gods that had rooted in themselves, that had rooted in themselves, rooted themselves into many different people over time. So we had all these new stories to find out about. And so Tool sucked us right in while we thought we were going to find out more about the band or CD or the nature of the universe. We instead would have some new book to read explaining the theory behind 46 and 2 and be lucky enough to... Hados, and be lucky enough... Where is he? To have some quote book in your hands as you read some quote by Tim Leary you've never read before about... If you ever get stuck in a groove, you can always pick up the needle and move to another. If you ever get stuck, oh right, if you ever get stuck in a rut, you can always pick up the needle and move to another groove. This is what I read while a useful idiot played, as it dawned on me what it really meant before I could ch change it myself, 46 and 2 started playing. It was brilliant. Synchronicity is what this confession is all about. It's what led you to this book, but that's another level that I can hardly comment on now. So Tool, my friends, and I became completely and totally inseparable. We spent all our time together. 
and we became this strange symbiotic colony feeding off each other on every level. Some days it was beautiful and amazing to witness, all the earth aligned in perfect harmony. But there were also nights that were so terribly awful, I still feel a heavy sadness fall upon me anytime I think back to those fiery nights. Now when it's your time to become who you are and you receive certain gifts, these are the tools used in creating who you will become. We all receive these tools in adolescence, a lance and grail. Boys become men by behaving as such and allowing the hormones to do their work upon the body. Now to me, this is a time of huge importance for us as individuals. This is the time when we become who we will be remembered as. Well, my friends and I were not a part of the norm, but we were connected with enough people to make everyone respect us. I mention this only to illustrate what type of mentality we are talking about here. For instance, there was this one kid, he was bigger than all of us, and he trained in some kind of mixed martial arts, but of course we all made fun of him for that, so he always tried to fight us. Now one night we all dropped some hint hits, and we eventually started this whole fight circle, except it was everyone against him. Now I didn't. Now we didn't attack. Attack him. It was all battle dance. Sure, he'd strike us. Someone get hit. Someone get one hit on him. We had twins in our group, though they weren't identical. They were fraternal. They fought him the hardest. They were all close growing up. So many were either brothers or neighbors. It was that family aspect of us that kept us all so close. We'd fight, but as brothers. We'd prank, but if it went too far, someone would intervene. At least it was that way for a while. So as large groups go, the gang split up into smaller units. Wow, that's a perfect place for a fucking commercial. Facebook. What's up? Oh yeah, dude. Here, you want this thing? Yeah, don't matter. Yeah, no, it's just bigger than that. Bones on the way through that bone shaft, but then like I said, just keep that part up. Yeah. I'll never turn upside down like you said and put it on the fucking heater thing. Yeah. Then it kick on and off all right yeah, turn at least on its side, it'll it'll go down to its one side then. True. Then just heat one and side. And then heat the one down. side up and slide. Yeah, I'll dude. Well, I'll leave this down on top of the refrigerator. Unless you need it back. Oh yeah, I'll come down then. Oh yeah, you can put it on the fridge, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the rest of it. That's fine. <laughs> 